that, we are going to uh, turn it over to uh, our It Takes Two runners. Uh, we have Argos and Demon Weave here. Uh, go ahead and let's get started. Sure. Hello, hello, hello. Papa Yon here. I'm primarily a Cody runner, and I've been running this game probably about a month and a bit after it came out. Hello, I'm Lem. <laughs> I primarily play May in this game. I don't know if I missed my introduction, but I'm Margros. Hello, hello. And yeah, I'm playing May today, and I've been playing this game almost since release, first couple of weeks. So, yeah, two hours, more than two hours now. Yeah, two hours, yeah, two years. So, with that, I think we can go. I did set the language to Japanese. And we start in three, two, one, go. So welcome to a crazy little thing called inbounds. One of this fantastic, the three major categories in this game of any percent inbounds and 100%. But this one, we're going to stay within the outer bounds of the game. No going oob allowed in this one. And so the first about 12 to 15 minutes of this run is going to be fast and hard because there's a lot of really cool movement and tech to showcase in the first little bit. And this is the beginning section called Wake Up Call, where we're going to go and grab these fuses. We were able to grab onto one of them and then reset the game uh, or reset from the checkpoint. Go back to the beginning, grab it again. And for some reason, that allows us to put it in multiple slots to get out of the initial section really, really fast and go on to the next little bit. So the fuse hop right off the beginning and then a first real showcase of the movement, a chain slide jump, which we'll talk a little bit about that there, which an intended movement mechanic in the game that for some reason just allowed us to access so many more areas than we could have ever dreamed of. It has so much different momentum and height that it gives us, as well as it allows you to keep your double jump coming out the other side of it. So using the slide jumps, we've already been able to bypass a little bit of the portion of the like intended route of the game, but still in bounds because we're still within the uh, the bounds of the world because Hazelight has done a really wonderful job of making these huge just loaded in levels where all of this architecture and world exists that we can run around through. Obviously there's like an intended route and the story that you go through them but you can still explore a lot of them without going traditionally out of bounds. So another great slide jump there to get across that section without having to do a little bit of a puzzle and using the boost from the vacuum to like the air pushing out of it, it caused them to go a little bit faster, which is fantastic. And they'll actually get here at the same time, which means they don't have to go for the reset from checkpoint. They'll jump back over the wall. And my goodness, they're already going sick nasty early on in this one. And we're going to come up to our first little boss here, but they got a strat coming up here where they do some menuing and change the FPS. So let them tell us why the heck are they changing their FPS from crispy 120 down to crunchy 130? <laughs> Down to 130. <laughs> Ooh, oh, no. Put down from 120 to 30, I should say, but we're going too fast. Um, we broke the game. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talked about this a, a, a way earlier than I thought we were going to right now. <laughs> but um, because of the online nature of the game here, um, the, there sometimes there are some desyncs that can happen. Sometimes you disconnect. That's just a part of the game you know and um some places are more common for disconnects than others uh so often like if if a set of runner comes up to a place that they know they disconnect a lot you'll see that they just quit the menu to like circumvent having to like go through the whole disconnect process um but yeah this is not an area we are supposed to disconnect usually yeah uh, it definitely depends on who's playing with who as well, too. I mean, we're very fortunate in the ITT speedrunning community that we're very, very well represented across the world. And I mean, this team right now is running America to Germany. 
himself. Little, just a little bit of ping to work with between the two oh, runners. A tiny bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, 30 FPS. <laughs> The, the, one of the main reasons that we do it is that there are several interactions throughout this game that benefit from having a lower FPS. And you'll see that at the end of this boss fight, um, they are going to be interacting with the arms of the vacuum boss. And the interactions just go a lot faster when you are in 30 FPS. Uh, so if you did this at 120, you would really have to like mash those buttons to even try and keep up the speed, and you, you wouldn't be able to. So very well done. They did a, a cool little optimized strat from an, from the running the IL of Shed that bled its way into the full game because these guys are gamers. We'll talk a little bit later about how much hours they have combined in this game because they've been on the grind set for a while and it's been really fantastic to see them push this and some of the other categories uh, to their limits. So now we move on into the depths where they do a really cool round. It's actually one of the old any percent routes where they're able to come up here, get on top of some of these beams here. And again, not out of bounds. They're still within the outer bounds of the world that's all been loaded in. They haven't gone out of bounds into the black unforgiving void to skip a section. So still considered in bounds for the rule set of the game as they explore all the geometry of the world. They'll get through. Nice! Grabbing onto the top of the door and able to get onto the top of the beam, holding up the toolbox. That is a difficult jump to do first try, so shout outs to AJ for pioneering that and for Damon for making it look so darn good. So what they just did there is there's actually a boss that would happen at the end of that room, but his hitbox is spawned in right off of the bat, so you can just shoot nails through the tiny gap in the wall and damage him to kill him before even having to go into his room. And now we'll move into the final section of Shed already, which is called Backbike. In this one, the players are going to fight the momentum of the rails, because in this game, the rails always want to send the characters forward. So they're going to do some jump and dash inputs to try and fight the momentum and go backwards. And they're trying to get all the way back the rails towards an earlier section to trigger a checkpoint, which Argo should have gotten it there. Very well done. And that will allow the level to load in the end checkpoint, which is this upcoming shovel here where they ground pound onto it and they get onto the next section. There's actually a way to get to that shovel much, much earlier, but if you don't go back and get that checkpoint back on the rails, it won't allow you to go to the next section. You'll just void. And so, unfortunately, we have to go back and find some checkpoints. So now we move into tree. Some pretty slick movement already going on where the runner's able to use the ropes to skip a little bit of sections. And really fresh air here in tree is mostly just kind of ring around the rosy. You work your way around the tree, you go from the bottom up to the top, you do some sightseeing, throw some paper airplanes, and now you get up to the top, grab onto the lever, and you'll move on to the next section. We'll head into the tree. And we're going to get some cool little player mechanics. And that's one of the things we love about this game is that each different chapter features some different mechanics that the players get to utilize to solve puzzles and work together to get forward. So what do we got going on in tree here, Larry? We have a sap gun and a matchstick gun. And they it gives each of the players like a unique ability that work for them. And so, you know, a lot of the puzzles that you have to solve throughout the game are, you know, co-op based. So... You'll see Cody here shooting goo and then May exploding it to like get rid of barriers, using the matchstick here to like lift up the gate. Uh, and you'll see that the sap has a weight to it as well. So you'll see that here we lower the bridge with that. And uh, yeah, no, just a lot of cool stuff that we're gonna see throughout this game. And this game has a lot of cool different instances where Obviously, it's a co-op game. It won Game of the Year for a reason. It's been very well done, and it has a lot of opportunities for the players to work together to get through the game, and especially in the casual intended playthrough. But as we're going to see here, there is also the opportunity coming up for the players to kind of do their own thing a little bit too, and where sometimes in the speed run where you'll need to split off to each go and find your own separate checkpoint um, to be able to load up the map, but then also to just kind of working through certain areas together as we see we needed them to be able to blow up that there very good job as they'll move into the next section here and every once in a while we'll see them go into the menu and reset from checkpoint i'm not sure i don't think i'd mentioned it before because they went too too fast at the beginning and they didn't even need so fast to. but this game has the mechanic where you can reset from checkpoint so if one person gets to a checkpoint at a certain part of the level and you reset from checkpoint it will bring both players up to that section together so that they don't have to uh, wait for the other person to get there. It's basically just a mad dash to see who can get there first. 
And Damon is going to be looking here. Finally, they'll get that checkpoint there as Argos going to head across. They get the couple of checkpoints that they're looking for, and then Damon is going to launch across to the other thing here. Great slide jumped across the gap for Argos there, too. Uses the matchstick gun to hit a target. Some wall jumping as Damon looking to get some momentum. Hit a death barrier underneath the big bridge. And normally in the casual playthrough, you'd walk across the bridge, and it locks you into a bit of a... Uh, they do a bit of a cutscene where, not even a cutscene, but just the camera shifts and you have to watch it for a little bit. Then here, we get into our first rail section. The players grabbing onto the rails, and they'll do what's called a rail cancel, where sometimes when you jump off of the rails in a certain fashion, you're able to store a whole bunch of speed and momentum. And we'll see that show up later in the game as well, where they're able to just launch off at the end of it. And right there, a great example from Argos on the left-hand side where you're able to just keep so much speed and momentum and clear gaps that you wouldn't normally be able to. We'll see one more of it there. Good job from Argros. And then again, grabbing onto the checkpoints there, able to reset from checkpoint and move us on to this mechanic here. So we got a few interesting things we're doing with the door and the boss fight after. Why don't you tell us about it, Lev? Yes, this door, for example, uh, again, uses the weight from the sap to lower it, but the players also have weight associated with them, so the fastest way to do it is, of course, just to get on it and stand on it. And this boss that we're about to see here, this uh, shield wasp, uh, depending on who's host, uh, ideally, like, you always have Cody be the host here, uh, and May can then just stand behind here and not get hit. You'll see Cody just spam the goo and you can just keep shooting until it's dead. And uh, yeah, no, very good execution here from them. Absolutely. Moving on into the next section. Again, in any percent, that's a, a very interesting, <laughs> intricate out of bounds section for May. And then Cody also has like a wall clip and stuff that he can do. So like this game has been fantastic in the sense that there's something a little bit for everybody. Like there's any percent inbounds and 100%. So for people that like to be able to see a lot of the game, but then be able to still um, go super fast. Inbounds is a great thing. Any percent is just, there's a lot of really cool oobs that lead to certain skips that you can do. And then 100%, you got to get all the checkpoints in the game as well as go after all of the achievements and collect all of the mini games along the way. So, but because there's no restriction of inbounds in 100%, you can still do some of the any percent categories. So lots of really cool things you can do with it. And that whole section, that room, might have been a little bit of a mini boss battle that we're able to skip because, man, the slide jumps are so, so cool. Just an intended movement mechanic that just broke the game wide open. Because you'd think a lot of things you want to do, double jump dash, which is one of the main mechanics you see in a lot of uh, 3D platformers. But in this case, the slide jump, just so much extra momentum. So if your character is running and you initiate a slide, your character will start skidding on the ground. As if you jump out of that, they do almost like a little bit of a flip jump. And then you can get a double jump out of that and whatnot to get even more height and momentum. Yeah, and then these players, they're shooting on the they're shooting this hammer. They're getting all the sap gooped up on there, but they're not doing anything. They're not shooting it. And you might say, well, what the heck are we doing? And it's because for some reason with this this B hammer fight here, the best way, the fastest way to do it is to just not shoot it at all. You get it all ready to go, and then May is gonna have a little lineup that she does over here and waits for it to come around shoots it at the right time that gets rid of that and it avoids having to do multiple different fights against hammers in a row or the next one that pops up is just going to finish off this section where it breaks the floor and we keep on going it's definitely gonna it's definitely been fun and fast paced already and then coming up we gotta still get a little bit more of the fun and fast pace before we get our first breather of an auto scroller and that's consistent across the three major categories you see these players they are moving they are absolutely flying down this hill as Argros keeping a whole bunch of speeds got the early lead on Damon here trying to plow their way through the walls Damon bonking on the wall a little bit Argros has a fantastic line and traditionally what you would do here is you'd have both players utilizing their abilities to be able to shoot the bees uh, or the wasps in this case I should say and be able to work their way down stop them from being able to get ahead of them and causing them damage does he get it? Yes, he's able to stall the momentum a little bit there. Well done to Argros and Damon catching up, using that momentum real quick. And then there's the reset from checkpoint to catch both people up at the bottom. But what they're doing is they're, it's called a chain slide. So they're chaining their momentum down these hills where in this game, if you're sliding down a surface, there is a bit of friction slowing you down. But if you jump as soon as you hit the ground, you're able to negate a whole bunch of that uh, friction loss and just keep gaining speed Momentum, 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 and it just keeps on getting you faster and faster. 
And that will take us to the boat section. Whew. We made it. <laughs> oh, man. That's a That's lot like, going on. <laughs> it is it is white knuckle over the first, like, 12 minutes of any run, 80%, 100% inbounds. And then you finally just get to, to relax a little bit here. You get this nice little... This little easy river ride here on the boat. And uh, yeah. So we'll catch you up a little bit on lore here and then we'll probably have a little bit of time for some donations after that as we go for a nice little cruise here through the tree. So what the heck's going on in this game? And again, a little bit of spoiler alert, obviously, as we go through the game, we'll talk a little bit about the lore and what's going on. You're gonna see a few little things as we go along, but I mean, hey, you're here for the speed running, so. We're speed running the lore of this game. <laughs> So in this game, obviously, May and Cody, things aren't going super hot. They're going to be getting a divorce, and that obviously makes their daughter Rose very sad. And Rose made a couple of dolls that looked very much like her parents, which we see that we are those dolls right now. And Rose ended up crying onto those dolls after a fight between her parents, and that transported the souls of May and Cody into their respective dolls. And now, May and Cody, well, they want to turn back into people. They don't want to be these little dolls. So they go on this adventure to try and turn back into real pe people. And that leads them on this crazy journey uh, led by Dr. Hakeem, the Book of Love, which was this little book that Rose bought for her parents, thinking that it was, it's like a counseling or book, or like a, a love relationship book that ends up coming to life and trying to teach May and Cody about the ways of love and relationships and try and bring them back, back together. But obviously things go awry along the way and they go on this journey together. So now we're in the tree, which the squirrels used to live in the tree. Now the wasps have taken over. And the squirrels, they're basically like a military outfit. And they're, they've enlisted us to try and help them uh, rouse the wasps out of the tree make our way forward into the uh, into the next step of our journey, trying to get back into the house and get our bodies back. Oh, yeah. So we'll have this next section here with these big, dangerous-looking tornadoes. However, they do run on a global cycle. They always go the same path, so we have a way to get through it all, which is pretty good. So I think we got a couple of time for donations while these guys avoid getting sucked up. All right, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm just looking through uh, our Tiltify page here, and one thing I've noticed is all of our incentives that we currently have running uh, have all been met, which wow. that oh. is, yeah, that's really really awesome. Um, thank you all to everyone who has donated. Uh, there's a lot of sweet little puppers down uh, in Norfolk, Virginia that are going to be thanking you for your kindness over the course of this marathon. And we get to see more gaming because of it. Everyone wants more gaming. Very much so. We love gaming. <laughs> We're seeing some fantastic gaming here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've been loving watching... Uh, the the movement no not not movement movement based Shmovement. runs movement yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> movement based runs are some of my favorite well they, this this run is definitely one of the schmooviest I've ever seen it's uh, it's the first run I ever got into as a speedrunner so shout out to my my first ever partner Glint or on Twitch they go by G Lint which I believe they have seen them in chat every once in a while and yeah. So we'll see another one of these intended disconnects here. Well, not intended, but we specifically here go back to the main menu because we know that this spot was shooting that lantern off in the distance. It like nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, depending on who you're playing with, you will always disconnect here. And so these players go back to the menu to, uh, what's the word, like prepare for that. And they'll go right back into the run immediately after. Yeah, and especially with uh, the fact that we have a load remover on PC, we cut out this time since, as happened earlier, disconnects are relatively frequent, even if you're not supposed to disconnect. Uh, the EA servers aren't necessarily the nicest service it can have to play on. And sometimes things go wrong anyways, and that's why we have the load remover. Also, rem remove times if you're in the main menu. And then these disconnects we don't actually pray to not disconnect we just disconnect ourselves to make sure that we don't lose well at seconds on 
not actually disconnecting until we then still disconnect. Mm -hmm. And shout outs to all of the, the wonderful people in the community that helped work on that load remover. Um, I don't, I forgot to put the list in front of me, but I know like Ironhead, Lemura, who's here in the call commentating, like there's a lot of wonderful people in this community that have, that have worked very hard on some of these things like the load removers and the, uh, the mod tools that we have now to be able to do some really funky things with the game. And, and really for the developers at Hazelight themselves, they've been extremely, extremely gracious and helpful along the way and very supportive of this speedrunning community. So shout outs to an incredible dev team for supporting the speedrunning community because sometimes that's not always the case. And they get the catfish cycle. Congratulations. Now they get an, your reward, another auto scroller. <laughs> <laughs> the fantastic reward. <laughs> yeah, this game likes to put auto scrollers here and there, so that being in a in a very movement heavy game doesn't get too exhausting. Which is really nice, but sometimes they are a little too stacked onto each other, like here where we have the next one already. Can you, what can you tell us, Lem, about uh, some of the funky stuff we can do with this game now with some of the tools at our disposal? What are some of the cool things you've been able to do? Oh, um, <laughs> well, uh, one of the, the cool things about this game, like, uh, as, a, as a baseline, just to, like, lay it all out, is, is that it uses something called Angel Script. Uh, this is something, a tool that, like, Hastelight has developed that... Um, lets you load the angel script files on runtime. So whenever the game launches up. So we actually have like source code access to a lot of the gameplay and we're able to modify those those files specifically, which gives us uh, the ability to do a lot of the modding tools and, and a lot of the speedrun tools that we have for making stuff, for practicing a lot easier. And uh, in terms of what you can do, I mean, you can pretty much do anything with it. Uh, yes. It's as in terms of like an example, for example, I made the um, a flying <laughs> mod, so you can kind of just fly around like a camera mod almost type deal. Helped a lot with like routing and stuff. Heck yeah. Ooh, and they both get into the fireflies. Very well done. So they get a really cool movement section there where they go off of the rails and we talked about the rail cancels. They're able to chain that into a slide and we saw them just continually doing the slide jumps down the hallway to keep a little bit extra speed. And then by getting into those fireflies using what's called a frog jump. So frog jump is if you do a dash and a jump at the exact same time, your, your player will do essentially just like a little long jump, like a little bit of a flip jump. And it is always at the same pace same distance every single time that you do it so you can use those long jumps or those frog jumps to be able to line up certain things like going into a slide jump or getting to a specific spot and we know that if we do the long jump or the frog jump it's gonna go into those fireflies every single time if you go at the right time so skipping going around to the right hand side and they get up the elevator and yeah basically just more auto scroller rewarding us for all the crazy gameplay that we had earlier but Oh, don't you worry. There is much more psychotic fast movement coming up in this run, so don't you worry. So they'll come out of a little bit of a cutscene here as the bees come up. They goop them up. They get ready to shoot them up. And then once the last couple of wasps are down, the elevator will head back up to the top once again. And we got another little mini boss fight coming up, so why don't you tell us about it, Lim? We're going to go up against a beetle, which is really cute. Um, and the way that we fight this one is that there are these spots in the ground here that you can fill up with sap, and then you explode that when the beetle is over it. And we have like a specific pattern. You see, we shot that one back there now. It's gonna jump towards us. We shoot it as it lands on it. You'll see that it like stays put there. And uh, Cody is gonna like manipulate it to still stay over there, fill up, shoot it again. And yeah, overall, so far, like, this has been really well executed, yeah. Very, very well done. Awesome looking beetle fight. But yeah, naturally, now that we've uh, beat up the beetle and blown him up, now he's our friend. So 
Of course. We, pro we promised him some nectar, and now he's going to take us on this uh, this little run. Or pretty much the only way that you can make it go faster is just by continuously chaining these jumps, because you get a little bit of a few frames of forward momentum when you do the jumps. So you just keep on jumping as much as you can and try and clear the gaps, because heaven forbid, if you fall in one of the gaps, it'll send you back. So just don't fall in there, and you'll be fine. All May's got to do, because May's still operating the Magistic Gun, just shoot a few of the larva pieces so that they don't end up giving you too much damage as you go along, and then for Cody, you get to steer the beetle along the way. <clears throat> and so now we just move on into the auto scroller again. Yeah, this game, as far as like playing a speedrunning game in the community that we've had, it's been really fantastic, and for a game that has as many resources as, as it does, it doesn't get there without the people. So for the folks in watching and chat right now and everybody that's been a part of the ITT speedrunning Discord and everything, like thank you for helping get this to where it is today where we can show it off in this beautiful state and and even in this beautiful state that it's already in, like this, these runs, any percent inbounds, 100%, they're all still being optimized to this day. New stuff is still being found. So very exciting to see the changes that, uh, that have still been coming to it. couple of RCPs to get us into extermination, which brings us into the Wasp Queen. So this is what we've all been waiting for. We come in. This is what we've been going after. The dreaded Wasp Queen that has taken over the tree with her deadly Wasp crew. So this boss has four different health pots, essentially. They have the front armor and the back armor both on the thorax and the upper abdomen area, so the chest and on her behind. We've already taken down the one on the front down low, and then the next one we're going to want to take down is the one down behind. But what we want to do at the same time is we want to still be damaging some of those upper pieces as we're doing that. Because each one has a specific health pool that once you damage it a certain amount, it will fall off. The fastest way to do this is as you're damaging all the other pieces, you want to be able to leave that front chest plate with just a tiny little shred of health left at the end of it to be able to knock it off. Because in the final phase, these wasps, as we can see, they can conform to a whole bunch of different things. They're blocking the archway, they're forming into planes, they're forming into bombs. We're going to see them as scissors at some point. We've seen them at hammers before. These guys, they're they are uh, they are like a Swiss Army knife. They're multi-tool. And at the end, they're going to be swords and shields that try and block our way. So as we see here, Cody goes back out of the rails, goops up the back, and then May quickly goes and takes out the wings, which will then cause another little bit of a section here. And as we see as speedrunners, we want to naturally play the game as fast as possible and doing as little as we physically can. So of course, naturally, we found a safe spot over onto this lovely right archway. <laughs> trying to think, is there like, is there any, is there any fight we haven't found a safe spot in yet? Like, does Joy, does Joy fight count as not having a safe spot yet? <laughs> and in the second auto scroller, we don't have a safe spot on Joy. Okay, okay, that's fair. Like, like very tiny, tiny places where we actually do have one. So we'll see. Rocking the angles here. Nice. Very well done. Damon able to juke around the shields and then Argos sniping up on the sap on the chest there. And the same thing here, getting a little bit on there. But then, man, this shield is early. So we got to blow that one up and then just shoot onto the hook and the chain that's holding the Wasp Queen mech up. Very, very quickly. Very well done on extermination, all things considered. That was pretty darn clean. There's the nectar. We finally made it. And then continuing in on the lore up to this section is, what's that? That's not a wasp, that's a honeybee. So it turns out that the bee was actually one of the operatives of the squirrels that went in before us. And actually, before I tell him about that, a little bit of cool movement tech here. Hey, there we go, the reset of the boost. So yeah, normally in this section, really all you can do to get through here is you can just wait for your boost to go back up and you hit it as Cody so that you can keep on moving faster. There, if you hit the terrain, you're able to reset the boost, but that's really the only place that we get to do it. Sorry. Cool piece of movement tech can really only do it at the beginning because there's not a lot of other optimal places to be able to save time with it. So we got scammed a little bit. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, a little bit more route differentiation here as well. You want to tell us a little bit about what's going on in here, Lem? What we do differently and what's going on? Why are we even in here at this point? 
in uh, in any percent. Um, they're conveniently like one of those windows at the beginning of this section. You can just fly through it, get out of bounds, and from there it's just you fly straight to the end. It's like three minutes of you just like flying. <laughs> Uh, of course, for inbounds and 100%, uh, uh, we have to follow this uh, path in here. And, uh, I mean, you just kill the enemies, avoid the stuff, try not to take damage, boost when you can. Oh, it's so funny though, overall, in the differences though, because any percent is just a straight three minute, like, you can leave, you can go have a break, have a Kit Kat, whatever it is you want to do. And. <laughs> Uh, but it, what is it? Only saves like 20 seconds, you're saying? Like, <laughs> if that? <laughs> yeah, that's something I, I mean, major. Something like that, yeah. But I mean, that's great. <laughs> but, but, but out it's of bounds. <laughs> time save? Hey, time save is time save. It's true. It is also pretty boring to sit there three minutes and don't do anything, especially if you didn't plan on doing anything. This isn't that far into the run too. Like, you probably did everything you wanted to do and you could have done in this point already before. Oh boy. We got a we got a squirrel on top of our plane and we're playing Mortal Kombat now we got a 2D fighter. Lem, how do we kick this guy's butt? The best way is to like double hit it on your way up and down again. And and while you're like going across from side to side. And you saw that was Woo. done pretty well here. And they got the Cutscene skip here too. This is not an intended cutscene skip, but there is like a few frames at the beginning where you're able to do it. And of course, they hit the timing. Of course they do. They're bringing the sauce today. We've been talking about this yesterday. Got an affinity for it. They're enjoying it. We talk, And I mentioned this a little bit earlier, speaking of you guys and, and like hitting stuff like that. Um, would you care to tell our lovely audience uh, how long have you guys been playing this game in a, in terms of hours? <laughs> so I am very very close to the two souls in our mark, but even though Damon has been playing for less amount of time and like he started later than me, he still has more. That's what you have, Damon. Yeah, I started out speedrunning this game on console. And I gathered about 500 hours on console before deciding to switch over to the PC. And from there on, after finding my partner Argross, have dedicated countless hours. Some would say too many, but 2,900 hours combining to be 3,000 plus hours of total playtime I have. It's nearly 5,500 hours combined with this team right here peak of speed running performance and hey that grind set does pay off because that do you is it still are you, yes. are you guys still the sweep record holders right yes, now? yes we still hold every oh, single record in the entire game my god that is every il and every major category for pc online i should say yeah that's true um my goodness every major record belongs to these two right here so there's the there's the open challenge right there the kings <laughs> yeah. are here you gotta come in here and dethrone them yeah someone come in here and beat them right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so this is pillow fort we've made it out of the tree we've made it into rose's room and now just some really again frog jumps slide jumps chaining the movement keeping the momentum high as you work through the early sections there now we get to do a little bit of hacking Fun fact, password is overdrive. And I'm pretty sure Lem, you're saying this is exactly this is exactly what you did when you were making the mod tools, right? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 this is okay. it. Yep. You see it right there, putting putting a smiley face on things, that's that's what I do. <laughs> oh, if only it were that easy. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> but this next sub chapter though. Oh please. My tell us. Tell my, us. I mean, of, of course, I'm biased, <laughs> but this is my favorite subchapter in, in the whole game. Um, but it's totally not because, you know, I found multiple skips in here or anything, but <laughs> um, it's just really cool. Like the, the gimmick here is that like May has these gravity boots and then on specific platforms, like begin change, you know, what direction of gravity is. And you can see that here. She is sideways. Uh, definitely not 
Nindra intended to be sideways at this point. Um, but with some good jumps, you were able to do that. And for Cody, you can uh, like stay small in the central section here, which uh, lets you preserve a lot of your speed and just get up to the top of the tower. So this way we skip all of the portals. Now for any percent, uh, this is also, this chapter is like a big deviation between all three different like major categories. For any percent, um, it's mostly a Cody carry <laughs> at this point. Uh, where Cody would like fly out of bounds somewhere, land on the UFO section of this boss fight to the last piece of this boss fight and just activate the ending trigger in there. And for 100% you have to go through all of the portals to collect all of the checkpoints and stuff associated with unlocking or completing the portals. Um, but yeah, no, th this whole subchapter I just think is really cool in so many different ways. That just goes to show the the dynamics again of how there's really something for everybody in this in this speed run. It's uh, it's been really cool. And again, thank you to you for for finding that. I remember when that first came out, how much of an absolute game changer it was. That yeah, no, if you run any percent, this subchapter just doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a three minute time save or something, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was it was uh, quite a bit. <laughs> Hey, you got a video up on your TikTok explaining it all that too. I do. And my TikTok is it's Lamira if you want to see that. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, so we've made our way through all these pillars and platforms to be able to have Moon Baboon shoot them and take down his defenses. So now Cody will grow to be able to lift this up and be able to grab on to the laser ray on the bottom side of the UFO, rip it off and then he'll deal with his next fuselade of goodness, which is going to be these rockets, which the players, it'll chase them for a certain period of time, one chasing May, one chasing Cody, then it'll run out of gas and drop down, except you jump on top of it, and magically it goes back up again. And then a great job there by Damon. Going to teabag him a little bit, let him know as he, <laughs> as he goes to manipulate the next rocket, just keeping it and lining it up to a good spot here, such that He'll catch Moon Baboon on the cycle coming across this way. And then Damon's going to try and land on the UFO once again, which they do. Very good job. And they're going to shrink on top of the UFO here because that little door, as soon as this cutscene finishes, is going to open up. And so Damon just goes right inside of it because they're already in position. So this is going to take us inside the UFO. And we're going to get to see a really cool off-screen skip here called the UFO skip. Where Damon's going to jump up into it. They're going to go offside here. But again, this is still in bounds because all that changes here is just the camera and oh my Lanta, they get it first try. Woo! Okay. Very difficult skip to do first try because essentially like if you go all the way to the end of that initial UFO section, you can gain control of your camera back and then go back um, to that section and be able to see what the actual platforms you have to jump on to be able to skip through that entire kind of temple run camera lock section where it's behind you but you can also just do it without having the camera you can just do all your inputs and it switches the camera part way through and then you get to the other side it's pretty difficult so fantastic to see them do it first try now we get control of the ufo we take out moon baboon and move on to our next section very well done on spaced out this will bring us to Hopscotch, which Hopscotch runs off of a global cycle right off of the beginning where we're going to be heading off to the right-hand side here and trying to get to some blocks as early on as we can. These players are basically going to be racing for the here to see who can get here first as they move on. And Argo's currently in the read right now as these blocks, again, they all operate on a global cycle. So if he gets them at a certain point, you can chain the jumps across them. And man, Argos is just flying, able to get to the reset from a checkpoint. And if one player falls down, never fear again. Your partner can always carry you through that section and be able to get you up to the end with the reset from checkpoint. So Argos gonna skip a bit of the section of the rail there by grabbing onto it once again, dodge the blocks again, and come into this room. And they're gonna start climbing up the abacus, but Damon came into the room, which grabbed a checkpoint that was on the way into the room. And then Argos grabs one on the way out of the room at the top of the abacus which then allows them to head on into school. 
But you know what? We're speedrunners. We're too cool for school. We're just gonna utilize the slide jumps, chain it across. We don't need no search and find. We don't need no connected dots. We're out. We're on to the next section. And so, yeah, now we head on to the cheese. So say cheese, click, click your Kodak moment as these two runners will release the cheese block and head on into the the next little bit here where all they got to do is move it around back and forth. And I didn't see, did you did you go back down to 30 FPS again? Did it's beyond 30. Nice. I can't necessarily tell if Damon did change his FPS, but I didn't mind. I was looking, I was, I blinked, so I missed it because you guys are just too fast. They are speed. They are speed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what like thousands of hours does to you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, dude. Eat your vegetables, drink your milk, and practice speed running. You can grow up to be Damon and Argos one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out shout outs to Hazelight again. Oh, one of my favorite sections, because as soon as one player lands on the block, the next one shows up, so they chain it and they go all the way to the end. Oh god, it's so good. There's so many cool little interactions like that in this game that like make you work with your partner and as a co-op game and as a speed run, it's just leads to so many different cool pieces of interactivity and cohesion between the runners. It is fantabulous. And for Hazelight too, you've seen a lot of time. We're gonna see it in this next room as well. This world, pretty much the rule of thumb is if, if you see it, you can collide with it. As we see here, just a little bit of that wall sticking out. So we're able to jump on top of it and skip the puzzle platform and get into the next section already. And then resetting from checkpoint at the end of each little bit, just to save a little bit of time. And oh boy, we got ourselves one of the coolest movement techs in the game coming up, which is uh, unique in its entirety, except for the first little bit to inbounds. Because in any percent and 100%, we basically utilize these to grab a checkpoint. Well, in 100%, you grab a checkpoint. In any percent, you would have just gone off to the right and gone out of bounds. But here, we get these fidget spinners. And the coolest piece of interaction with these is that if you go to interact and put the fidget spinner back underneath you, you see it launches you right there. Argos going and overshooting just a little bit, but Damon still holding the momentum and getting across here. What a launch! Oh my god! That oh, speed. Oh my god. The banana. Oh, he's still going insane mode. Oh, he's a little low, but he keeps it going through the watermelon. To the second one. Yeah, for whatever reason, if you go to get on top of the fidget spinner right before you hit one of the bouncy portions, you carry so much momentum through. A one, a two, and oh, not too bad. A little bit into the tunnel. There's actually a way if you get the perfect angle, you can launch like pretty much like two thirds of the way through this bad boy. But very well done overall here. As they're gonna make their way up, we'll grab onto there uh, and just uh, the photosensitivity warning coming up. Yes. After Thank this, you for uh, reminding us. Yeah, after this elevator, we're gonna see some, some flashing lights, lights and stuff. So uh, just keep that in mind. Yeah. So we got the kaleidoscope section, which again, yeah, the photosensitivity warning and motion sickness warning in a little bit as well too because I know I know when I first played this level casually I was like oh, 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 brother it was uh it was a little a uh, little bit woozy but it could be it could be a little bit different if you're watching it as opposed to physically playing it yourself depending on what you're watching on so just the warning there though but you know, very another one of the very very cool design sections of this game where just so much detail going into the certain different level designs in this game and man you gotta wonder what his light was thinking on some of these levels because they are brilliant mostly just some movement to carry us through a kaleidoscope up to this point where again a little bit of a mirrored section here where all you got to do is connect the dots here or connect the the hexagons and then one player all they got to do is stay in the middle and it takes us through ah oh, no typos that's okay <laughs> Sounded so disappointed there. Well, it's because I am. You gotta see the T-pose if you can get it. <laughs> then for this section, all you gotta do is wait for the tower to show up. 
And then they'll reset from checkpoint and again another one of the sections where it's could be a little bit deceiving because if you reset a little bit too early it could disconnect you but partners in sync here as they utilize the slide jumps to get up the tower get to the top and avoid having to kind of move the tower around and get the levels in line enough such that they can get to the next section but now we move into train station which has got a couple of pretty cool things so what do we got going on in train station lem uh, light warning is over as well. Yeah, I was about to say it's over now, so you can look back. Uh, here in train station, we have these dolls. Normally, you have to collect, I think it's like four of them uh, to be able to do the whole thing. But it turns out that one doll can pretty much do almost everything. So we only get two of them uh, in an ideal world. Right now, we're going for the backup um, and placing the... the backup that we got into the section but you're able to make one doll kiss itself and then also operate the tracks if you're able to do it all right yeah, it's a bit of an interesting mechanic that you can get to work there as far as saving you from having to go and grab all the extra dolls and then we move into dino land which this one is basically the same throughout all three of the major categories May goes on to the red dinosaur, Cody goes to the green dinosaur, but either player can operate either one. The only difference being in this one is for 100%, uh, there is a, a couple extra checkpoints you have to gather with uh, whoever goes on to the red dino. Yeah, uh, just uh, just an achievement. Oh, and the achievement. Oh, that's right, and the achievement as well. Which in this one, if it was 100%, uh, you would see the green dino go over to the red dino and give it to oh, the, uh, wow, the old sweet. munchy munch. And there's actually an achievement for the green dino to eat the red dino. The red dino basically just grabs onto all these platforms, gives them a smack, flips things around, and the green dino can stop blocks from flipping over by grabbing onto the bone on the side of them. And now May will proceed to get absolutely obliterated by the wooden pterodactyl. And Cody will take the green dino over to the end, lift up the platform to enable the end of level trigger. And then through a little bit of platforming, is able to get back up to the top and grab onto the lever. Give the dino a bonk, and we'll move on into Pirates Ahoy, which is going to have some pretty interesting stuff happening. So get going, Lem. Give us a, give us some preface, because Pirates Ahoy is a, is a little bit wonky. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> This, this does come down to connection uh, again, which if you play this on, on local, aka on the same system, uh, that's going to be like the actual fastest way that you're going through this, because then there is no desync that you're dealing with. But uh, what's going on here is that there is a boat for each player, like, and the server is trying to sync them up to be in the same location. So sometimes you'll see that the cannon balls are like going cross-eyed or, or far away from each other. And that's because it, it's constantly trying to like make sure that the location matches with the other player. Um, which causes some weirdness uh, and that slows you down a bit as it's trying to force you to be in the same spot. Otherwise though, like you kind of just have to like take tight lines, try not to bonk into anything. Get rid of the obstacles as you're going through and uh, make it to the octopus at the end. And this here. is really big D thing as you might be able to see. Yeah, you can see that cannon is coming out of nothing. <laughs> yeah, now that they make it into this section here, basically the play play of the game is just to get rid of these three boats as quickly as possible. And the way you do that is you go left, right, left. And you're able to utilize the dynamite box on the right-hand side to blow them up like they don't know nobody. And then make their way into the next section. Again, resetting from checkpoint just to save a little bit of extra movement and whatnot of the boat. Because obviously the less we have to do with the boat, the better. Because this thing is janky. But yeah, coming up, we're going to be seeing our next boss after we cruise around here which is going to be the octopus boss and we had to do we had to do a little bit of science with this boss because originally we weren't sure how we were able to get the two cycle but lem we were able to find out so how what do, what do we do what do we find out about the our good old friend the octopus so um after like looking at the code and stuff and doing a lot of testing we found out that the boss actually have uh has 50 hp and it triggers its next cycle when it hits 25. And the way that you would get the two cycle on the last phase is when you're able to line up your shots to sync together so that 
the boss ends up at 24 HP before it starts the next phase instead of 25. So if none of the players here are missing their shots, uh, it should always end up at 24 HP, which uh, we'll, we'll see right now soon. Uh, we have like a nice visual lineup to, to be able to tell usually if we are going to make it. And uh, as far as I can like see, it. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be fine. See those lamps off in the distance? Like, <laughs> we get to shoot some duckies and yeah. So if you and I think yeah, it's like if you, if you if somebody misses one of their shots off at the beginning, um, you either have to like you either have to have the person that missed the shot wait a shot and then go again, or you have like communicate with your partner to have them miss a shot as well too, such that you don't end up off cycle. And uh, be, be two HP short. Or actually, no, we only one HP short at the end. Yeah, one we'll HP. So we'll see. Pretty sure they got it. Finish them off. Get the two cycle. Yeah. Hey, there we go. We got it. No problem. No way, Jose, baby. Uh, after that excellently coordinated boss fight, uh, can I pop in here for a minute? Sure. Yeah, of oh, course. Yeah, uh, we have some new incentives that have just opened up uh, that I wanted to make y'all aware about uh, since we met all of our last ones. Uh, so we have Mirror's Edge play on hard mode. Uh, great game. Uh, and that's another movement kind of game. Uh, we've got Meet St. Nicholas in Anno Mutation M. Uh, it's a cool one. Uh, and then we also, in Loom, uh, Miss Dragon Bid War. Uh, are we going to bully her or let her take a nap? You decide. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sapphire. You're doing a fantastic job, by the way. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah. yeah. I think a nap sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I could use a nap for sure. <laughs> oh, man. I feel that it's. Uh, I mean, I mean, for me being in uh, west coast of Canada, it's about 10:35 in the morning right now. So, I'm just my, my day's just getting started. Oh, well, we got a we got quite the international crew here. We got Norway, Germany, America, and Canada. Time zones. <laughs> <laughs> They're hard. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this is the greatest show. We've seen some uh, ability of the players to utilize the slide jumps to get around a few obstacles. And now it's basically a payload escort mission for this here marble. And Cody, they went across to the other side, reset their death checkpoint on these pillows over here, and may set up the marble for Cody such that Cody could grab it from the edge of that platform. So there's like a bit of a side piece of the wood there that if you stand on the edge of that versus the top piece of wood, like the very top of that platform, you don't reset your death checkpoint back over to that side so you grab the marble jump off and get teleported to save a lot of movement across the balloons and yeah we get to shoot the balloon that was holding up the drawbridge and continue on with our little push trolley cart here except oh no what's this oh god the track no it's not ah! and it's okay we land inside once upon a time and we just keep on going which this uh this section is really really cool bit of a hub world um with a lot of exciting stuff that you can see and a lot of cool world building, all these toy soldiers walking around. I think there's like two or three mini games in this oh, section, geez. a lot of cool interactives that you can do um, in this whole world. But as we, as is the, the bane of every speedrunner, we don't really get to experience it that much. If you do though, learn, learn and run 100%, because 100% you get to see a whole lot of this sub chapter. But we have made it. To Cutie's castle, the queen herself, to see a little bit of a shot of her up above the door that we're about to knock in. And this door itself can be a little bit finicky. I think the grand total, the uh, the most we've ever seen to take to knock down this door is 14 knocks. Usually it only takes like two or three. But one time, goodness knows what happened. It took 14 to knock, knock, and get in the door. 
and we move into Dungeon Crawler, which this game, again, shout outs to Hazelight, cannot thank them enough for making such a wonderful game. They do a great job of implementing um, kind of odes to different genres throughout time. Like we saw earlier in Tree when we were fighting the squirrel that there was a nod to 2D fighter. Now in this, oh, a cool little strat there where Cody's able to use his ultimate to get back his dash and get across the platform. But this also like a Diablo-esque top-down ARPG, which these runners know exactly where all of these uh, enemies are going to spawn. They can spawn camp them. They can just do whatever they need to do to get through this as quick as possible. Because there's a bit of a run a route variation here as opposed to any percent and 100% as well. In any percent, we would have already been out of bounds. See you, bye. As we would have gone up onto these kind of the, the black area on the tops of the walls and been making our way all the way towards the end. Whereas in inbounds, you just got to careen through as fast as you possibly can. Um, which every Cody player is eternally sad in this subchapter because you see May's got this incredible long dash and then Cody gets this tiny, <laughs> tiny little teleport that moves you like five feet forward. And then May just, oh, look at that. Just, you <laughs> zooming. I'm so and happy I'm a May player. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm crap, me and my Cody's are crying in the club, man. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh man, and then 100%, you also get to go up out of bounds, but you do have to come to the very edges of inbounds every once in a while to grab a few extra checkpoints as you work your way through so that you can get to the end. But yeah, now there's this giant, spooky, scary oven doll. It's gonna chase us down with her rolling pin of death. But just get your way to the end as quickly as you possibly can and then Use your ultimate abilities to break these, and oh no, she's catching up! She's gonna get us! Whatever will we do? Yes, yeah, see you, bye. <laughs> leave her in the dust, leave her in the magma, and then head on into the next section. We got this troll coming up, Lem. What's going on with the troll? It's uh, another uh, boss fight style thing, uh, but this time uh, we're gonna like make it basically do the work for us like it charges at us right and uh, we just needed to break the chains to the, the middle pit of fire to open that up and we're gonna lead it down there and uh, smash its hands at the same time uh, so it falls down there and dies and if I'm not if I'm not crazy which quite often I might be um, you also want to make sure not to accidentally damage him as he's dashing around, because then he'll uh, he'll just stop. He'll just stop and smell the roses for a little bit. As we'll see, great use of the ultimate there to work together and take him off, send him into the into the pit, and then we move on to chest fight. Which man, this this is this is all RNG. This is all RNG. Yep. You, do, <laughs> you you do what you can, but at the end of the day, we're just at the mercy of the king and queen. Is the queen? will move around as, I mean, we all, we've all played chess. She can move around however she darn well pleases. And then the king will just follow her one space at a time. This is actually not too bad, though. That's a lot of damage. Okay, they're sticking together. First of down. Oh, there goes the queen. Being the queen. <laughs> I was about to say, now that you said that, the queen is going to go far away. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I jinxed it. Commentator's curse. <laughs> no, the, the, the best R&D you can get is if the queen just decides to stick around by the door and not move further than just a few blocks there. But nothing really much you can do about that. And now we've moved into the emotional damage section of today's run where, man, of all the wonderful things Hazelight has done, this is the one thing, I swear to goodness. Like, as a speedrunner, right? You have to play the games hundreds of times because you're going through, you're getting runs. This is the one section of the game we cannot do anything about every single time you go through this you have to go through this emotional damage of dragging this poor elephant over to the edge of the bookcase and chucking her off so like i don't know man the people that run il's in this category they're a different breed <laughs> <laughs> but never fear if you want to be brought over to the side and know why we do this every time you might think oh cutie she's lovely why are we doing this to her i'll tell you why 
Hidden behind a veneer of cuteness is a dictatorship. The queen monitors her people through surveillance that extends into space. She manipulates her people with the facade of being a cute elephant while executing and torturing her political opponents to the very end when the revolution catches up with her. She's pleading through the fake persona to save her own life while being completely unfeeling to the thousands that perished in her dungeons. Shout out to Alien God for that beautiful copy pasta. Yeah, you'll see. Uh, if you if you watch people speedrun it takes you, you'll see that copy pasta show up a few times, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, I've I've seen many a TikTok of people playing through this game for the first time, and they get to this section, they're like, "What is going on?" Yeah, why are oh. we doing this, Jan? Oh, you know why? Because we want to turn back into people, Lem. And that's the most logical course, right? Rose cried on the dolls to turn us into the dolls. So what better way to turn back into people than by making her cry again? And this cutscene, this one right here that we would normally watch if they land on the bed, they're standing there dancing in rain. And the rain is their daughter's tears. It is the most screwed up thing. I, I, <laughs> it is... Fun fact, like, too. That was uh, in Bounds, Rose's room world record. Woo! Ooh, nice! Okay. Let's go! Oh my goodness, that, that is fantastic. So now, after setting an IL world record in Rose's room, we're moving into clock, baby. We're keeping the momentum swinging. And now, again, inbounds. Within the outer bounds of the loaded in world. So we're not going out of bounds. We're just utilizing the architecture of the map to get from area to area, which normally the game would try and keep you within certain areas that you can do puzzles to move on um, and platforming to move on to the next one. Uh oh. Uh, a rip. <laughs> Went back to the clone instead of teleport to the new one. That's okay. We're just have to redo the section a little bit here. Nice, cool movement and slide jumps to get across. And that gives me a quick second to talk about the power that we just saw. So May in this chapter, her gimmick and ability is her cloning. Because May in the real world, her biggest thing is that she feels that she can't be multiple places at the same time. She feels like she needs to be in multiple places at once. And so Dr. Hakeem, the book of love, gives her the ability to clone herself. <clears throat> and then for Cody, we'll see he has a stopwatch. And as we see there, he's able to manipulate time and move things around in the world using the stopwatch, either by fast forwarding or rewinding time. And that's because Cody feels like he never has enough time, whether that's enough time to spend with Rose or to deal with his own passions and things like that, like his gardening, which we'll get to see in a little bit. But another one of these wonderful worlds, this is Clock Town, where we get to go through and essentially payload escort. You got to get the dolls from the beginning to the end, and you interact with a few different puzzles and challenges along the way. And in 100%, there's some different achievements and mini games that you get to find throughout this world, but Clock Town just absolutely strewn with a couple of really, really cool um, like Easter eggs and things like that, nods to other games, and uh, just one of the other examples of this beautiful, in-depth like in -depth world that Hazelight has built for this game. So. so I believe, yeah, because any, any percent in inbounds basically, well, actually, no, that's a lie. Any percent used to do this, but any percent now has some real wild stuff that they do in this section to do with the birds and some out of bounds and all that goodness and the the hell tower mini game that you could spawn in as well too which is basically just a, a platforming challenge run which is pretty cool to see and now we move on to the next section and this is going to be another kind of global cycle here that the players are going to look to be hitting so they're going to build some momentum here off of the early stages ride this elevator up to the top where they'll be introduced to the birds. And in any percent, we would have gone out of bounds to get to these birds um, early on and be able to fly them back towards the beginning and then use them to get out of bounds again. So we go out of bounds, inbounds, out of bounds, and then into another section. But here in inbounds, you get on the birds, you head over to this first tower, and both of these towers have a shield generator um, bestowed with them that we want to go in and turn off so that we can get into the clock tower itself because there's a big shield defending the front. So we see with a clock on the wall there that whatever the hand is pointing at, that is going to indicate which one of the platforms that we can actually stand on. So they're going to stall here for just a half second while they wait and jump out of the red platforms and then using the slide jumps, they're able to clear the gap and get across to the other side before having to wait 
for the next section to go on to, which that part would usually include um, one of the players going over to the side and being able to manipulate some of the clock hands so that different platforms light up at different times. But we finish off that tower, and now we move into the next one, which this next one here is going to be inputting a code. So this one could be a little bit interesting. We'll see how they fare with this one as they'll run off into the next section. And then, oh, all right, they're just uh, they're just going to go for it. They're just going to spam the code right away, and they get it right. That's actually not that impressive. It's the same code every time. So the players get to work together, and they, <laughs> and they just know exactly what buttons to press in unison at what time to get through the code. In the casual play through the game, the code's just in the other room. You go and you find it, you bring it back. So thank goodness, because if that was randomized every time, oh my goodness. In a place where runs die. <laughs> we already got a few of those places. We don't need any more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fun fact, this took three tries yesterday. We'll see if it goes first try today. Hey, let's go. <laughs> see, today they're, they're gamers, you know? So. <laughs> oh, they, they got it all out. They've been saving their best for the marathon, baby. I think, uh, which like knock on wood, um, yesterday, I think we had about four or five disconnects. It was uh, it was interesting when we were practicing the other day. EA servers were, had were, were <laughs> they were they were working overtime yesterday. <clears throat> so yeah, we got a we got a little bit of a, a quick auto scroller before we go into another section. So do we have any other donations or mentions, Sapphire? Mm -hmm. Uh, so not that I see at the moment, uh, just, uh, these incentives here, uh, let's see, I can tell you a little bit more, uh, about some of the other stuff we have coming up, uh, let's see, so, the run after this, uh, that you may or may not be aware, we're doing Sly Rancher any percent and glitchless. Uh, that will be fun. Uh, and then Mirror's Edge and Anno Mutation M, uh, two of the games that we have incentives for, those are both going to be uh, tomorrow, first thing tomorrow morning, actually. Uh, so you can look forward to those in the 10 a.m. EST and 11 a.m. Uh, EST time slots. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, we are patiently awaiting to hear from you guys. Uh, the, the, the puppers in Norfolk are patiently awaiting to hear from you guys. Um, uh, you know, I've been working with, uh, no glitches allowed for a little while now, and, uh, I gotta say I really, uh, I enjoy working with, uh, this kind of community, and, uh, I have a lot of respect for, you know, Go Rescue, uh, you know, pet shelters or no-kill pet shelters especially, I think is something that we need more of, uh, you know, to, to care about the animals more than anything else. Uh, so do really great work down there, and uh, that's why we're all here to support them. <clears throat> Absolutely. That's awesome. Honored to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. So here with this section, a um, bit of a huge run deviation between any percent and inbounds where we saw some incredible movement there from Argos and Damon where again, they get to kind of split up and prep some things to be able to grab those keys where they went into various sections. We saw Argos as well being able to utilize a couple of death warps to get back to the center platform a little bit quicker. And now we move into the bullfight, which this in any percent would be bull skip, where May is able to get out of bounds early on and able to climb the architecture around the outside of this arena to get to the other side and be able to grab onto a piece, uh, like one of those bird levers that we saw very early on in the clock, as we got into the clock tower, I should say as Cody will control the time. Normally, yes, you can just go out of bounds and get to that lever right there to bring the level up to that point, reset from checkpoint, and be able to grab onto it. 
But then, bit of a, I remember Lem, you were saying there's a pretty interesting part of bull skip, like, is that you can't, you can't leave it or something while it's going on? Like, what was going on there? Yeah, when I was trying to mess around with it and see if there were, like, any other interesting things you could do in terms of, like, out of bounds and stuff, um, it turns out while the fight is active, you, you're just not allowed to leave the arena at all. Like, even if we use our tools to, like, teleport out, you just get teleported right back in. So, it's interesting. No idea why. <laughs> it's one of the one of the interesting idiosyncrasies of the game in general. As May will continue to jump up the wall here, but hold on a second, we're leaving Cody behind. Where is he going? Cody's just going for a run outside there. Yeah. With this, the trigger to close the door and start the elevator to go up to the top goes out horizontally from the doors. So if both players run past those doors, uh, or one player. Um, hits the death checkpoint, dies, spawns inside, and then the other player goes past the death or, or the uh, the trigger on the outside of the glass. Then it just closes the door and you can go up, and then one player or both even can just stay on that platform down there. The game raises the platform up to the top, and then we get to go into the next section, which is really, really cool. We have fast ropes coming up because this next section is gonna be on a global cycle where we've seen players swinging on the ropes in the game. We know they can be a little bit janky and that means this next section is gonna be tough because you have to hit every single one of these ropes at a specific time so you can get the one cycle where we're trying to get to a lever on the other end that is gonna be swinging back and forth. And if you get it on the right cycle, you don't have to wait for it to go back and forth. You can just go right to it and it'll launch you to the door at the end. So get ready. We got some fast ropes coming up. Alright. Start your engines, boys. Who's going first? Okay. They'll head off at the first bump and then Dune and Argros both pretty much neck and neck coming off of the first thing. They'll get onto the first platform and again. The cycle's still looking good early on here. Grabbing onto the first thing. They'll jump, use the momentum out of the cog halfway through already. Oh, Argros nearly bumps the thing and drops down. And Damon right on his heels. They're gonna both gonna go to the right one. Misses the first grab, gets the second grab. Can Argos recover? He can! And launches right through and gets to the door first. Man, Argos, you scare the ever-living you-know-what out of me every time you do that because I think you are gonna fall. And then and you grab onto that arm as it swings at the bottom half and it launches you through to the end. My goodness. It's scaring me like that, man. <laughs> I mean, if it's a consistent setup to get launched every time I take it. That's the, that's the gamer mentality right there. And yeah, now, now the, uh, the most difficult boss fight in the game. This is uh, the bird fight. As you can see, we can we can just jump off, we can do whatever we want, and uh, you just spawn right back up into the thing. People, uh, no health benefits uh, or detriments, no nothing. Bird just slams on through, both players can perish, and it just keeps on doing its thing. This is definitely, this is definitely one, of, this is the, one of the places where Run goes dying, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the time. Mm -hmm. What the hours do you have in this game, man? It'd be hard to tell since you probably do a lot of stuff with the... 600 or so. Woo! Yeah, but like, half of that, you know, is me like messing around with modding stuff. So, realistically speedrunning, it's more more like 300. Okay, okay. I think... Let's see, what do I, what do I have? I think I have about that. Uh, no. <laughs> Actually... Uh, I have two, like, 280. There you go. I picked up the so, game last year. Oh, goodness. Yeah, you got <laughs> half the time, half the time overall, like, IRL that I've been, that's the thing, because me and me England were right in here off of the bat. Speaking of getting involved in the game, tell us, you two, how did you guys get involved with running together? Like, how did your, how did this partnership uh, become a thing? So, I mean, as I said, I started out the game, like, basically uh, immediately after release, played with somebody else. We got some qu quick records, and then that kind of broke. The person that I played with doesn't play that much today anymore. And then I was on a real break, records got broke. Damon, in the meantime, at some point started, as he said, on console. And he wanted to c compete with the 
with the more competitive people on PC, which, because of the load remover, has the most competition. And then he came over, put up a resume on Discord of he wants to find a permanent partner that actually plays a lot, and I was like, eh, he wants to play any percent. I was a full inbounds on at that time, and didn't really care. We at some point sat in a call, we talked, and funnily enough, he did play inbounds before, and was like, yeah, Let's let's try some inbounds. Played some inbounds, and then just started to get record after record and went to the other categories as well at some point. The rest is history, as some would say. Indeed. Heck yeah! No, it's uh, it's uh. I want to say to this. It's been really cool to see you guys develop as a team. Yeah. Usually, I do have a voice uh, like a voice cue here. I can't use it right now. I have zero clue what the queue on Japanese is. Let's see how it goes. Nice. Uh, oh. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Exactly. I got it anyways. We can hey, hit two clubs hey, at the uh, same time if we does dash. Does not matter the language, baby. There we <laughs> yeah. go. If we dash over at the exact right time, we can hit both clocks at the same time. And you can, if we do it once, both, then we can skip one drop cycle. And usually I use a voice queue for that, but... It just worked fine on feeling. Heck it's yeah. all in a muscle memory now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they'll... Players work together. Cody gets to control time of the explosion here to keep the debris in certain spots that may can platform across it. But because we're able to grab onto the edge of that initial piece there, we can set our death checkpoint to be on the top of that platform. Because um, all May had to do was grab onto the edge of it and then fall down into the abyss. Which allows us to skip a bunch of the sections of that platforming. And Cody will ride the chime into the heart of the clock and that will basically do it for the clock chapter. Hoo -hoo, we got another good one for you. We got they've been some of the best for partway through because up next it's one of the ones that people even if they don't necessarily speedrun this game they may still know about it. We got Snow Globe coming up. Um, this is one of the one of the first sub chapters, uh, one of the first chapters I should say that I myself ran into this game. It's been one of the ones that's introduced a lot of people to this game, kind of like the gate the gateway to getting them into doing full games and things like that. Um, there's a lot of really cool movement tech and a, ro a lot of excellent coordination between the runners that you have to do. So get ready, because my goodness, it's snow globe. We're gonna start with a little bit of warming up. The player's going to slide down the hill, use the momentum to get across the open door here. And any percent, we would have already gone up out of bounds off of the tree at the beginning. But this is inbound, so we got more things to see, baby. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. They got backups. These runners have been here before. Yeah, many, many an hour here. Because that is a difficult jump to get across and grab onto those icicles to be able to use the ledge grab and get onto the top. Because in this game, your players, they can grab onto the ledge. Um, on the side of something and then be able to get back onto the top of it. Switch places, use the magnets, get up onto the top. And another really great example of the chain slide mechanic where they do one slide into another slide and use that to clear the gap across the river. Oh, and a bit of an oyster there from Damon. Shout outs to who is hyper for coining that little phrase. It's like the first time that it ever happened where you, you, hit, a, you hit a slope just right and it just launches you across something. Hyper was so flabbergasted just, I am an oyster! And we're like, all right, well, I, guess I guess that's what it's called. <laughs> Absolutely schmoovy with it. As we'll see if we can get another rail cancel here. Oh, yes. And able to get within distance of the magnets. To shoot across, and we're going to get up here. And we got something going on with the ice here coming up in a little bit that we'll get Lem to talk about. But first, we got the bridge. A great job to slide across there, get to the other piece, and now here we go. We got some ice to talk about, Lem. What do we got going on? Ice is uh, it's quite something. So when you move on it, of course, you, you get like uh, more speed because you're skating and stuff, but there are specific spots. When you are jumping like you are right now, you're gaining more speed, but there are some spots that just like launch you. You saw it right here. Uh, and uh, it's some ridiculous speed that you are able to build up through several portions where ice skating is involved. And, uh, you know, what can I say? Ice physics are nice physics. Hey! <laughs> 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 like, 
came up God. with that line yesterday, and it's great. <laughs> that is, is a banger. <laughs> Put it on a t-shirt, baby. <laughs> Yeah, we really, yeah, we could, we couldn't even commentate for like a couple of minutes after that. It was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So welcome in to Winter Village. So th this, oh boy, I, oh, I'm so excited for this. Like, let's see, this, this the Winter Village. There's so many different ways you can go about it. Again, very different in all the three runs. But we're about to see some more of these nice physics. We'll see if Damon can give you the sauce here, baby. We're gonna launch off the first one. Oh, grabs another one, so we're gonna do it again here. Don't worry, we got we got something real cool. It's gonna be coming up real quick. Cause with these, with the ice, if you jump off it and then you grab onto the rails, you're able to just absolutely launch as Damon goes for it, lands up on top. There's the sauce, baby. My goodness, no dry sandwiches up in here. We got so much of it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I love this chapter so much. There's so much cool stuff that goes on to it. And again, another example where the players work together by going apart. They're able to get to different areas, different sections. Um, and in this um, sub chapter, the whole point is that um, this actually, where we are right now, is within a snow globe that was um, got at the little ski resort where May and Cody went to, where Cody proposed to May. And so we got transported inside here and Dr. Akeem's trying to rekindle our, our love and passion. And so in our absence of that, the town has frozen over. And so we're trying to get to all the towers and ring the bells to break out the ice and bring the village back to what it should be. Um, and just some incredibly slick movement that the players are able to do, climbing up the separate towers. They'll get into the center gondola here and it's gonna take them up to the top in any percent. Again, would have been out of bounds. Uh, doing some cool movement tech to uh, get them up to this section here. And then they would have gone around to the right and got a little bit underneath the map as well, too, and then slide jumped back up in bounds. But Argos grabs a nice fancy top hat. Look at that dapper fellow right there. Gives it back because he's a nice guy. And then we'll head on into the bobsled section. An interesting thing with the any percent route actually is that the, the only reason it works is because of a random trigger that is out of bounds that lets you be able to interact with the bobsleds. And uh, like the, the trigger doesn't even touch anything in bounds at all. It's just there and it lets you do stuff. Thank you, Hayslide. <laughs> 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 but they're on purpose, just for us, yeah. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> ah, nobody's going to find this thing. We'll just put it over here. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> I strive one day to make a game that just has so many ingrained things like that with the speedrun community in mind just to wait until they find it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all part of it, it's leaving these little Easter eggs and crumbs. And, and like we had said before, it, the Hazelight has been absolutely phenomenal as far as being supportive with the speedrunning community and helping us to be able to get access to some of the tools that we have to, to make speedrunning a more enjoyable experience with being able to create things like save states, like, like uh, invincibility and different things like that. Being able to see um, invisible volumes in the world such that we can practice platforming um, like some of the any percent platforming that goes um, in like out of bounds or invisible sections to be able to get the practice and feel for it. Um, so that when you're doing it in an actual run, you you can just muscle memory it, you know where to go. Well, we get into the final section of the bobsleds here and oh, that looked a little sussy on, <laughs> on Cody's side there. He almost clipped through the bottom of the tunnel. What the heck? My oh, goodness, this game always full of surprises. But we make it in to beneath the ice. The players are going to launch into the water and use their momentum of the swimming and the dash to get up out to the left side here. And in any percent, would have gone off to the right-hand side and more done some stuff over there. But here for inbounds, got to stay in. So we go and introduce ourselves to Lenny. Say hi to Lenny, everybody. Hi, Lenny. Mm -hmm. Lenny, let's see how Lenny's feeling today, because, you know, Lenny, Lenny's not all about that pollution. We're trying to fix these pipes that bring all the candy cane goodness and power back to the lighthouse, because we want to get to the top of the lighthouse, activate it, turn it on, and be able to get to the next section. But Lenny, he's not about that. He knows the global warming's a thing, and he knows we're one of the causes of it because of these darn pipes, and he's trying to stop us. So Lenny, 
obviously, anglerfish, a little bit blind. So any time that noise happens, Lenny will recorrect their direction and head back towards whichever one that you fix. So, but Lenny is on a global cycle, which is pretty nice, so that once you get here and you do the first one, Lenny will go over there, you fix the second one, Lenny will go to that one, and you can basically just get to the last one without ever having to worry or deal with Lenny. Um, but man, Sometimes Lenny will be doing some weird stuff and you'll just hate that anglerfish. You will absolutely wish that you could make sushi out of it because, yeah, <laughs> Len Lenny has uh, Lenny's killed more than a couple of runs. <laughs> so they'll launch out here and as we saw, they were just able to leave the wrench over top of it and now here comes another one of the big boy tricks. We stopped, we talked about where runs go to die. It's this wall right here. It's the BTI wall climb. Let's see, they both got it first try yesterday. That's one. Oh, come on. I believe. Come on, get up this wall. Okay, Damon's up. And Argros is up. And that's within Let's five go. tries. That is still absolutely fantastic. The thing is, sadly, Cody only really matters if... I, I can prep something. If I'm actually first, it, ma it matters that I'm first. But since you got it first... Mm -hmm, well, at least you matter. got the wall, but, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's get up the wall. That's still, hey, that's hype. That's fantastic. Like these guys, like within within five tries, guaranteed. And that's tough to do. Like there's sometimes it'll take you 10, 15 tries, if that, to get up there. Because what they're doing is they're trying to get a jump reset off of that wall. There is an infinitesimally small little piece of terrain on that wall that if Cody and May land on it, they'll actually land and they can then jump because they'll regain their jumping ability. But if you don't hit that exact perfect spot, sometimes it won't give you enough height to jump up the rest of the way. My goodness. To see them hit that. And like they both hit that too, but obviously like we have to go and prep some of the other stuff. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. But now we're at the end. We've finally powered the lighthouse. But console, something interesting with this section. Lem, what is it? So there is a console exclusive skip in this game and it has to do with this lighthouse uh it works on older gen consoles uh at least i i know for like playstation and stuff ps4 version works and you can do it on ps5 as well with the ps4 version but you can go up to the end of this lighthouse and just activate the end trigger and move on to the next level and that has to do with like how uh how much memory it has available to load in the next level and on the older gen consoles it doesn't have enough of that uh, and so it just like forces the load screen always and uh you can just move on so that's uh, a pretty big skip that's exclusive to consoles i wish we could do it on pc but you know we gotta do what we gotta do and again here you're seeing more of the ice physics are nice physics <laughs> oh baby they are so nice with it these run oh the rail cancels these runners are just nice with it honestly like i don't people got clap emojis cheer emojis whatever it's got to do we got to get them up in chat right now because these these guys are just flying down this hill here oh my goodness. and just yeah it's just it's a combination of knowing the timing of when to jump to keep as little friction as you can with the ice grabbing onto those magnets at the right time and having the magnets cooperate too because in this whole section obviously the gimmick we have these magnets that we've been, been introduced to because dr hakeem is trying to rekindle our interaction or our attraction i should say with each other and yeah so cody's got the blue magnet or sorry may's got the blue magnet cody's got the red magnet and we just continue on our merry way but my goodness, they utilize the slide jump to get up here, grab out of the rail to go through, and we'll see some cool rope tech. We'll see if it cooperates for them because the ropes, they're real janky. Grabs onto it, uses the height oh boost, my. and they both get they it. Oh it. my goodness. Woo! That was, uh, that was sick. Oh, you thought the sauce was only back in Winter Village. It's just a full course meal, baby. Here we go. <laughs> Oh my goodness, yeah. So the way the ropes work there, you're able to get your double jump off the rope once you release off of it. So if you release off of the rope, once it launches you kind of horizontal there up near the ledge, you get enough height and momentum that you can grab onto the side of that platform and avoid having to go around the side. It doesn't save an egregious amount of time, but man, it is swag. It is cool. And we got another skip coming up. We got the cabin skip. Well, you want to talk to us about cabin skip, Len? 
cabin skip is pretty cool um, because normally at the cabin here you would have to sit through uh, an unskippable cutscene that like shows you the mountainside collapsing and stuff but because of the rail cancels and oh just oh. barely but he gets enough distance to stay yeah, yeah. Well. for sure they, they got a normal strat which Woo. is to hit the death uh, trigger on the other side there or the checkpoint trigger and spawn over there but there is a really really cool one that you can do where you also go oh, off of the wow. ice on the side of the cabin and just make it all the way across unfortunately they didn't get the skip here so they have to go through this this section normally um but sometimes, if you do it well, you can get the skip where this whole section doesn't collapse and you can just keep going forward. Unfortunately, no glint skip skip for them. Shoutouts to Glint who found a way to skip through a part of the section of this uh, skating area and then found a skip to their skip because the original skip was too difficult, hence we got glint skip skip. <laughs> Love you, Glint! <laughs> Sadly, it's a one try only skip. Mm -hmm. So me failing it made it impossible to do again. It's pretty bananas considering like, yeah, it depends on like the architecture of the map just collapsing and landing on it at a specific time. Now we get to see some magnet hopping, which is going to be pretty cool. Where again, the intended mechanic with this, the magnets is being able to attract to one another and be able to use it to clear gaps and stuff. So see it there as they get the reset up of the wall and then grab it over here. And we can magnet from a really far distance away. Very well done there. And so we're able to zoom back in and be able to use it to clear the gap there at the end. They'll grab a checkpoint here to catch the map up because, man, the map doesn't even know what they're doing. They're going so fast. So they're going to use it to go up the left side of the mountain here. And there'll be a timed cycle of gusty winds here that go down the mountain. And it blows the players back. But if they do this little magnet hop, because you see, once they grab onto the player and they jump off, they go forward. It gives them more forward momentum. So they use that to kind of leapfrog their way in front of that post on the left. And now they'll be able to carry up the rest of the way and be able to get up to the top here before the uh, the wind hits them again. So very well done. They clear that section. May's going to shimmy back and forth there as they work their way through. And that's a, that's a keyboard player right there. <laughs> Not, not able to go at a perfect angle. So WD, WD, WD. <laughs> So they'll get up to the top here, and they're going to do a time dash off of the fence there, and then magnet hop into the middle, and they're done with Snow Globe. Because all you got to do to finish off the level is you get into that area there, and you magnet together. It's the same way that any percent would finish things off as well, too. Um, or, yeah, you just get into the end there, and you magnet together, and that triggers the end of the level. Whew. Two more to go. Now we're in the garden. Gosh. Oh, you guys look good. I heard a, I heard a vocal cue there. I was gonna say Argos. I don't think we go for that thing. You get what I'm saying? You are very <laughs> silent for me. I did not hear what you said. Perfect. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program. So now we get into Garden. And so the last two chapters of the game are Garden and Attic. And both of these, the lore behind the game is that we get to experience um, both players' particular interests and their passions. In Cody's case, it's gardening. And we talked back in Clock how he felt like he didn't have enough time for his different passions. And so we've seen as a result of that, the garden's been taken over by all these thorns and vines and corruption. And the players, exactly, they're going to use that to their advantage because that opens up so many more opportunities. They'll get over top of there and avoid having to open that door the natural way. They're going to utilize this, come across, get around the edge, and utilize the wall to be able to get a little bit extra momentum to get across to the other side and avoid having to go through an extra platforming section. But May in this section, she gets her scythe and her ability to water the garden. Cody has his little leaf flail or malice, whatever you want to, mallet, whatever you want to call it, on top of his head that he can use uh, to grab things at a distance or attack enemies. And then he can also turn into various different vegetables and flowers and plants and things. We saw him turn into a daisy there for a little bit. Um, but then here, we're going to see this big boss arena looking place. But nah, we don't need that. We're just going to go around to the edge of it because we don't want to fight Burrower. Burrower has a, a big, stinky, unskippable cutscene, so we're just going to avoid that. 
and head on over to the top of here. Down below is another really cool area that the devs added into the game, that's the spa, which is one of the achievements you have to get if you do 100%. So you'd go in there, you'd relax a little bit, get a massage, and then go on with the rest of your run. Well, that's Green Fingers. It was real quick. Then we move into Weed Whacking, which Weed Whacking, we get to see a whole lot more of. Any percent would have already been out of bounds. And Hundo, we still get to go through like inbounds as well too, because you get to see some of the various things around. But yeah. With this section, lots of, uh, lots of more great movement as we go through. And again, just me and Cody working together as they got to get to the different sections and get to the different bulbs to be able to open them up. Cody's got to grab onto them to open them up so they can get a nice long drink. And once the bulbs have been watered, they'll open up new sections and then he can reset to go on to the next part. Ah, okay. I also put your toilet on. Oh, that is all right. Just an example there of what can happen if you go a little bit too early on an RCP. And sometimes the RCPs can be a little bit um dangerous if you have high ping with your partner um because you might see that the game has reset from checkpoint but um for your partner it may not have and if the partner is the host then sometimes things can be a little bit janky like that but it's all right because they're going to continue to be nice and fast and schmoovy while they're doing that lem talk to us a little bit about the the mechanics of the uh, the fighting in this chapter and how it all go how it all goes down oh uh cody has a long range attack and uh may has a close range one so you see like she always has to get close up to do a sight and stuff and you'll see a lot of the enemies here uh may will do a jump attack uh which will insta kill them instead of like doing grounded attacks which is like two or three hits uh, but one of the interesting things about May's attacks is that if you spam attack and dash at the same time, you can get a way faster attack cycle. And this is something that we tested as well by binding, by binding both attack and dash to the scroll wheel at the same time. With a like, <laughs> free scroll mouse, uh, you can get some insane FPS. Uh, and so, yeah, the, the faster you're able to mash that, the better it's going to be. Uh, especially when we come to some of the enemies later on that have that are way chunkier, have more health. We got these cute little spiders who are helping us out as we make our way through the uh, make our way through this section. Again, pretty much just the intended casual playthrough with the spiders as we work our way through the garden. Um, as we do that. I remember asking you guys this once, but I'm curious to hear it again. Um, you guys can go one at a time. What? Uh, how did you guys get your gamer tags? Ooh. So, uh, my brother and I played a RPG at one point, and I was really, really young. He came up with a name for a character that I wasn't as actually supposed to play, but I then played a, a lot, a lot. And that name was Argos, and I just kept it because I like it. That's it. Named by my brother, and it's a really good one. Yeah, and my, my dad, for my name, was just a huge comic book fan, and he loved writing his own, like, fictional stories, and he happened to make this character, and so just to kind of live on through is his love of like creating characters and comics i decided to use his name for accounts online and he may not be the most fond of it but it, it definitely is just something i really enjoy to be able to share that's super cool but you lem how'd you get your name uh well <laughs> my my username right now is from uh when i was regularly playing World of Warcraft back in the early 2010s. <laughs> um, I was heavy into like role-playing at the time, and so I was playing on a role-playing server, and so it was uh, my main character. Uh, and uh, it kind of just stuck after that, ended up swapping to this everywhere. So now, Jan, you can't let us hang. What is your... <laughs> what you get to your name? Uh, so, yeah, so Papa Jan. Uh, so, like, my real name is Ian, 
And so one day I was at work with, uh, with, with Glint, actually, the guy I ran this game for the first time ever with. And um, he was trying to get my attention at work one day. I was just trying to think of the stupidest one-syllable way that he could say my name. And so I was, because I, I, I was distracted by something and I wasn't paying attention to him. And so he finally was just like, like, Ian, Ian, Jan, Ian, Jan, Jan. And he like, he just said like, Jan. And I just looked up and stared at him. And like, he's like, yep, that's what I'm calling you from now on. <laughs> um, and then because naturally that's so short, you can't really attach anything to that. Like I could never get that for a gamer tag name or anything. Um, we're like, well, how the heck do we make it something I can have as a, as a gamer tag for now? And we decided to add Papa onto the front of it because I'm like the dad friend in most of my friend groups. Like, like I'm not a dad, but I have that like dad energy, like cargo shorts, dad, vibes. dad jokes, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, dad jokes, like, hor like horrible, horrible jokes. Um, and then uh, like being the designated driver at parties and stuff like that, just like having fun but making sure everybody else is safe and just like yeah, giving off, giving off that that dad energy. So we added Papa onto the front of it, and now it's Papa Yon. A little bit, a little bit about the names. So we move into another ode to you know like Plants vs Zombies. Like <laughs> Cody gets to teabag on him a little bit there and let him know. But we get to move into a real cool section here. Oh, um, that guy was still alive. Oh, there's one guy. Quick, get rid of the corruption. <laughs> He's just saying hello. He's like, he was like right in the corner of the screen. <laughs> yeah, we get to move into trespassing, uh, which this is uh, basically an a exercise in don't make the moles mad. Oh. We, oh, were we okay there, or were we possibly having an issue? I'm pretty sure we're just. Yeah, okay. we're good. Okay, good, good, good. All good, just double checking. So yeah, so they'll move on into this section here. They'll be able to uh, bump a little bit of the wall piece here to get their selves up into an actual running position just to save a few frames there as opposed to doing the little crouch animation. And oh, look at that. Here's all the moles. So yeah, just, uh, just make sure that you're quiet so you don't like the moles. Like, if I see a single capital letter in chat, I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> Everybody's got to be quiet. So there's actually a really specific route we can take through this section that we'll see Argos doing here that has slide jumps and frog jumps in it in a certain area in a certain time such that we don't trigger the end of the bar because it's actually kind of forgiving. But you got to be careful that you don't wake up the moles and that you don't touch the moles because that will instantly wake them up. See, that guy's going for a stretch right there. Look at the cutie. Oh, no. No. Who did it? <laughs> Who did it? Somebody, somebody <laughs> wrote in caps in chat. Somebody it did it. It was a tea tree. A oh, tea no. tree did it. <laughs> no, tea tree. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty Simple tight route. <laughs> Gosh darn it. That's okay. So yeah, it's a pretty tight route. But with a lot of practice, it just becomes like second nature. And then Cody would turn into the uh, the grass here to soften the blow and let me go up and do this. And then, Whoa, what are you doing? You're going to wake them up. It's okay. We got an RCP here. So we go on to the next section. May is able to bounce off of the mole, which pushes her forward enough to trigger the next area. And then you just reset into it before the game realizes that you jumped onto a mole and gives you the game over screen. Aw, look at them! Look at the stretch! What a cute, <laughs> so cute. Mm -hmm. Unless they're trying to eat you, then it's kind of, kind of, kind of weird, champ. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay with that. They're sleeping right now. That's okay. That's okay. So what break really up are? Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. What's up? I, I was going to say, what what really are moles other than just ground digging doggos? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. <rude. laughs> in uh so yeah in another ode to uh like if i'm looking at a game i'm thinking this is a nod to crash bandicoot uh and running away from the uh the, the giant boulder but also some indiana jones vibes in here as well too and in any percent right now we would actually be over top of this like we'd be running on the top of this section of the map um, platforming across the top of it with like slide jumps and things like that just to get across as fast as we could 
Um, and you don't get you don't see any of the moles or anything down in it because this area like never gets triggered in. There is one little mole you get to see when you go out of bounds in eighty percent. So you still do get to see the cute guys, but uh, yeah, get stuck there and buried in. So we made it to the next section. But alas, just when we thought we were free of the moles, there's another one here. So we get to see a little mechanic called a ground pound cancel here which if you initiate your double jump and go to ground pound at the exact same time, you'll see the players just instantly drop if they do it correctly. Because if you go to ground pound in this game, you have a little bit of an animation, like when Yoshi goes to do his down B and smash, and he does a little flip before he goes down, they have to do a little bit of an animation before they drop. But if you do the thing at the same time, then uh, it kind of cancels that. You save a few frames. But, uh, yeah. Oh, what? Wait, what was that? It's not a Ganelf. It's not a Ganoblin. It's a gnome. And, and you you've been a gnome. <laughs> oh, it's so it's bad, but I love it. It's I've ever agreed to. <laughs> <laughs> we commit here. Don't even lie. You love it, Lamp. Don't even lie. <laughs> <laughs> So, as we move out of trespassing and into the next section, we go into Frog Pond. And these frogs, as always, with a lot of little critters in this game, they have been very, very cute. And so they're going to use these raw, these frogs to become their friends. Oh no, he goes through the bridge, but that is okay. Spawn right back in. As, again, the frogs have the wonderful jumping mechanics that they'll continue on flying through the map. But, uh, originally, any percent in this category, which I mean they still do, we get to see that frogs fly. And for a long time, it was one of the one of the unfortunate parts of inbounds that we never got to see frogs fly. Because that's always a fun time. But, due to a new piece of routing that was found, we are indeed going to remind you that frogs can be fly. So we're going to tuck into this corner here. And then once we get up here, we hit into the wall, and there we go. A little bit more height. There. Oh! Is that too early? Oh. That's too early. That's okay. <laughs> unfortunate that's there. there. Oh! Another unfortunate one, but that's a okay. There's a race now. Who can make their frog fly the fastest? Okay, Damon's in there. So they get up to the top of here, and they go and they hit a death barrier that's off to the left, and that spawns them back in um, further ahead, and it would avoid them having to go across a bunch of different platforming sections and go up to the next section. And then once again with Haze Light, again, everything has collision. Everything is collisionable. Now I'm going to coin that as a new term right here. I looked it up. Turns up it's not a word. It's just the name of an app, but we're going to use collisionable. <laughs> collisionable. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we're cleaning out another bit of corruption there. Yeah, frogs can also dissolve into thin air. You know, <laughs> these, these frogs are capable of a lot of things. No. Frogs can do a lot of wonderful things. The great slide jump there by Argros to cut across the other side. Damon's a little bit ahead of the vines here, but that's a okay. They'll catch up here. We got an RCP. They'll be able to catch everybody up. As again, the the garden's starting to look a little bit more like it used to. Look at all these pretty flowers. Mm -hmm. So this is where any percent would have married up. Going out of bounds initially would have been able to get to a mini game called Snail Race, which we can then warp to when we come up to here. But you haven't really talked much about the differences between any percent um, and inbounds and what truly delineates them, but we'll have a lot of time to talk about that coming up with Joy. So we'll save that for now. Just put a little, little bookmark into it. But yeah, now we get some access into the actual greenhouse here. And we got the shovel jump, which if you slide jump off at the beginning there, you get enough height that you can grab onto that at the beginning, which allows us to avoid um, the oh, <laughs> like Cody just showed up in the full wide section of the screen there. So Cody gets to turn into the flower and the flower bed may gets to water it up. And then once you get enough flowers in the bed, it will spawn the enemies. And then once you get through most of the enemies. We're gonna leave one of them behind and head across to the other side because the players have to get all these flower beds going to 
open up these corruption bulbs so that they are able to get through them and get to the next section. Yeah, basically just water it. It used to be you would go side to side, but now it was found to be much more optimal to just go up one side and down the other. Spawns up another group of enemies, and again here, just working together both sides with Cody able to utilize the long-range attacks to take out the flying enemies a lot easier than May can, and then May swinging away at the grounded little tree boys here. And then Cody will head back across to the other side and be able to get set up and ready to go on their particular corruption ball because we want to destroy them at the same time. As we'll see here, both of the cutscenes will kind of trigger over one another. You see here the one on the right side there tried to show up for a half second. They play over top of each other and it saves us some time. And oh boy. Coming up, we get the Joy boss fight, which despite its name is extremely misleading because it is about eight minutes of auto-scroller. <laughs> There's a few minor things that we've optimized and can save a little bit of time on, uh, but for the most part, any percent, 100% inbounds, it is exactly the same. And to quote who is hyper, the boss fight's about seven or eight minutes, give or take. Probably take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's basically just Cody turns into various fruits and veggies and rolls around and has to take out these spitter towers and May has to water the ground and keep them keep the enemies at bay and man if you're May on this section like I've never played May on this section but like it just looking at it looks like painful because you have to be able to water the ground and take all the aggro of the enemies, and there is so many of them. So you gotta, you gotta be in the right bad. place at the right time. It's not that bad. I mean, the enemies by default will try and aggro more to May than Cody anyway. Okay. There is like a specific range around the enemies. So like they, if May is closer, they will always choose May. And if May and Cody is at the same range, they will still always choose May. And then if May is a bit further, still May. But if it's outside of that range, then it goes for Cody. Which sadly so. was for one of the guys the other way, because I was apparently not close enough for him to go at me. But, yeah, I mean, you can see we have a safe spot good. here. But otherwise, is there really much to talk about here? We can probably throw it to some donations if there is some. Let's see what I've got going on over here. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> All right. Uh, so no donations at the moment, but uh, I do have a couple things I want to say. First of all, uh, Jan, you've been just an absolute hype master for commentary this run. <laughs> I, I don't know how you are just so constant high energy, but I love it. I very much appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and uh, other than that, yeah, I'm super, I'm super excited to see all of the uh, different runs that we have going on uh, later today. Uh, See, I think I, I might have mentioned it earlier during the Earthbound run, but uh, I also I have uh, one of my runs is later tonight, uh, Ori the Will of the Wisps, uh, multi world randomizer. Uh, let's see, other than that, we've got oh Sonic Colors coming up. Uh, that's a, another fun animals game. Uh, gotta love saving the animals. Gotta, you always gotta tie it back to the puppers. It's all about the puppers, and no, it, it's it's all about the no glitches, and then also the puppers, because that's that's what we're all about, you know. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm very glad that we've had no uh, lack of cute vibes uh, in this run. True. It's plenty oh, cute man, things in the run going on. Also, cute, some cute disturbing runners. things yeah. after you saw some cuteness. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Cute runners, cute chat, cute moles, cute spiders, <laughs> cute everything. Mm -hmm. The run is just very kawaii core. <laughs> <laughs> funny enough that we're that like, I mean, I haven't been like listening to audio, but like, we have. Like, funny you say that because <laughs> Japanese was the one that won the uh, the the voice line incentive. So, although I think the uh, the. The subtitles and stuff, and uh, the words have still been in German, but the Yeah, uh, indeed. I could have changed those as well, but I don't want to get confused in my menu. Oh, it's, yeah, it's because totally fair. Because then I probably just would be confused. Like, I don't know how the options look at all <laughs> yeah. in, in Japanese. I'm not actually doing that in Masamumi. I'm reading the things. That is totally fair. <laughs> yeah, I, I really wanted Japanese to win because... Uh, I I may or may not be biased. Uh, I I do know Japanese. Uh, <laughs> I'll say that much. May get their close up there on the camera at the end. And yeah, move us on into the next section here. So basically, and then one of the other kind of key time saves that we can do throughout this whole section is uh, resetting from checkpoint immediately after you've killed one of the bulbs of corruption on Joy. And there's the three of them. There's there's the one on her arm, there's the one on her back, and there's the one on her head. The most important thing to remember though, and my goodness, like, <laughs> ask me how I know because I've killed a run doing it, is that um, do not reset from checkpoint when you kill the last one. When you do the one on the head, the final of the three, just skip the cutscene. Don't reset from checkpoint to try and skip it because you'll go right back to an earlier section, which is unfortunate because it could be an opportunity to save a little bit more time, but. Yeah, coming up very soon, like Cody's gonna be able to head on inside and be able to bring Joy back down here again. And then yeah, this one'll be skip instead of a instead of an RCP. And they'll move on out of garden into the next section. And that looks like that looks like a gold, which is pretty hype. Now we're into the final chapter of the game. It's Attic. So we've gone from Cody's um, passion of gardening. Now we get to see May's passion of singing and music. So a lot of that stuff, obviously, with her being busy with work and everything, has been put away upstairs in the attic. And this chapter is really, really cool because we get kind of a hub world that um, we get to access different sub-chapters from as we go through. And in any percent, this is actually such a huge difference because in any percent, in that original hub world, we would have gone out of bounds to get to the other side of the invisible wall, um, grabbed a mini game, and been right into turn up. So we would have entirely skipped rehearsal and symphony. <laughs> but because it's in bounds, we get to see so much more of this beautiful game. Um, and both rehearsal and symphony are really cool sub chapters too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wonderful false slide there. Carry the momentum doesn't go all the way. Yeah. Way to be. Yeah, there's so many cool different pieces of geometry in this map that you can use to your advantage to keep on the slides and the jumps and they'll move on to the top of the jukebox here and head into the next section. So coins. The players know exactly where they want to be to pick up these coins. They know where they move to, where they flip around so they can get them into the jukebox here. And, and as soon as the, the uh, cutscene starts, I'll reset from checkpoint. And then again, utilizing the rope tech, fantastic to get onto the top once again. It'll get through to the next area and reset once again. And again, May's power in this section is the ability for her to use her voice. Damon's gonna grab onto this little speaker here. And normally, May would be using her voice in order to blow up different sections of this circuit board, uh, which now that he fell in, we'll be able to see a little bit of it here. Where he just uses it to clear out the architecture and get from one side all the way through to the other. Because now we're gonna set up the little speaker near the other microphone. So we can turn up the volume, cause a massive feedback loop to blow out the jukebox and go on to the next mm -hmm. section. Cody's going to utilize his Captain America symbol shield to 
get on through there and then again utilize the slide jumps which it's like an intended movement mechanic but it absolutely blew the game wide open utilizing around the side to be able to get his symbol and chuck at the giant cord break that open and go to the next section here able to utilize the slides and get across here and a bit of bit of a new jump that they had found where they could utilize a piece of it to slide across so they utilize the jump get over grab onto the guitar strings and use it to get on over and land on top of the cassettes launches them up yeah no this like this this and clock are are hard not to have as picks as some of the most visually appealing um chapters in the game like just atmosphere oh yeah and oh the music oh the music is so good but to be fair the atmosphere is in every everywhere in the game is really amazing it's never lacking anywhere oh for sure he selected a fantastic job on, on this whole game oh yes they get the 2d platforming let's go yeah, so Cody is going to be controlling the dials, which moves things around in those couple of sections and utilizing the momentum of swinging those platforms around to get May up to a, a higher area. And then getting the wind chimes ready for Cody to go across, grab onto the lever, and they'll move on to the next section. Back from 2D into 3D. Oh, we got some, some finicky little snakes here. So how are we going to deal with these, Lem? What are we going to be working on here? on the, this first one you can just like stand on it and get all the way up and this is uh, that was unfortunate uh but if if you don't kill this one and you actually skip it going up this way none of the other snakes in the following section spawn so it, it it's always faster to be able to do this because you don't have to deal with any of the other snakes mm -hmm. now of course i am uh, not playing well on this oh it's all good. He got it. He got it. Struggling a bit with some aggro there. We needed to aggro onto May so that May can like get the height needed off of it. There we go. Very precise good jump as job. well too. So there we go. Yeah. So normally at, at, at this section, for example, there would be a snake standing right there. But since we didn't kill that first one, these didn't spawn. So. And we don't need uh, both players. <clears throat> yeah, they're just able to move across and reset from the checkpoint to get all back together. There is another stake there, but May is able to use her voice to soothe these snakes, and so making sure that they move through this section at enough pace um, that actually you can you can get through it all on one use of May's voice. Um, to be able to skip all the snakes. And again, they'll utilize a bit of a voice there to take out that last snake, because whenever you soothe the snakes with the voice, it opens up their base so that Cody can get at it with the symbol. Uh-oh. We thought we were done with snakes. Now we got a now we got a big snake. But we don't want to deal with the big snake, so we're gonna skip a little bit of it. How are we gonna do that one? There's this small section over here where you can kind of just jump off to the side and hit like a checkpoint further down the path that you're taking. And so you'll see them do that here, just jump off on the side. Hopefully they get the checkpoint needed and then you can use RCP. Yeah, there we go. Woohoo! Good job. Similar to, uh, to the skip we did back in um, spaced out where it is still considered like in bounds because um, it's within the bounds of this world that's been loaded in it's just the only reason why we can't see that is because the camera is locked to a certain perspective but still very much within the world and still within the, the realm of rules so yeah now we uh, dealt with that oh now here he comes he's gonna try and get through the hole there Gonna close the door, we're gonna deal with this big snake! We chop off his head. Crikey, that's a big one. <laughs> but as you know, the great Steve Irwin, whenever you whenever you see something dangerous in the wild, you gotta go poke it with a stick. 
and then go lay down a beat right after, I guess. <laughs> Indeed. Absolutely. Ah, <laughs> uh, again, some great, like, slide hops here. Going down slopes like this, it's so satisfying seeing your speed build up. Mm hmm. You just get so much movement going as you keep on hitting it. And then this section is really cool as well, too. Normally, you would want to keep um, both players kind of in sync with May controlling the spotlight to keep Cody from taking damage. But uh, there is actually a line that you can take as Cody through here where you don't even need the, um, the light to fully catch up with you. You can just keep on going, and a little bit of touch from the, the light will be all it takes to actually get you the health you need to get across. But just keep on flying, jump off the architecture there, and keep on going forward. You can dodge the swinging pieces, get all the way to the light switch at the end, and well done. That's going to be it for rehearsal. Now we get to move into symphony. So we go from the deep dives of the grunge to get some orchestral music here. So symphony again is at the right off of the bat of the beginning, utilizing the rail cancel to be able to get a lot more speed up top. And then in any percent, or actually no, is it, was it? There was a, an interesting thing I remembered seeing in here. Oh, okay, Ooh. Damon gets it. Woo! Nice. This is a new strat they recently found. Mm-hmm. Where uh, you're able to get one player. It, it's so tight. The height that you need, is, it's like... Uh, it, you need like the perfect slide hops to be able to get the height that you need. Uh, but you are able to actually grab those without sending them down. And... Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a person with 3,400 hours. That trick is one of the hardest tricks in the game, without a doubt. Yeah. Hot diggity dark. Yeah, dude. <laughs> 3,400 hours into the game. Is that... Do you, have a, do you have a favorite trick, Damon? Yeah, that, you know. A lot of the rope stuff in... Uh, and Snow Globe is considered some of my favorite deck. I would personally 100% is... agree. No, this is cool. Because in this cutscene, normally you're supposed to stay completely still when you trigger it. But if you do like a loop-de-loop -loop at just as you at trigger it, you can keep going and hit more of these uh, glowing balls. gather up all the notes out of the glowing balls and send them to the end, which gives us access to this nice big area. So we're able to fly on over and now we need to steal some keys. There's going to be some demons that come out of the ground here and they're going to fly around in a crazy pattern, but the crazy pattern is very much similar. So we can chase down the first one that has the key. I'm going to take the key and then follow a path right back to the locks because it can be a little bit interesting if you don't take the exact right kind of like path or take it to the timing because other demons can steal the key away from you once you've grabbed onto it. So you gotta be careful to get there in the nick of time so that you don't end up having it be stolen back. And then then after that, all, all heck breaks loose. <laughs> But keep it on the theme of making things cry. Now we're gonna get the uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the clouds to uh, to rain things down, and then the first demon that comes out of the hole there will be the one that has the key, so you can take it out right away and be able to get into the next section. Very well done through Symphony. Definitely one of the shorter subchapters, at least here. And this is where any percent would catch up with us. Because we would get the check the, the mini game that's off to the side there. And we would just be able to continue on in this section. So those two previous subchapters completely skipped in any percent. Which is cool, it's the only place that we actually have like a full subchapter skip. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, the Speed. absolute momentum that they've got here. Whew. Okay. Argos is still in the lead right now, coming around the corner. Welcome to Rainbow Road. Hopefully nobody's got a blue shell. <laughs> okay, Damon has a little bit of a stumble. That's okay, because Argos is still carrying an insane amount of momentum. Oh my god, the launch. Grabs out of it for safety. We'll see how much momentum Argos conserves coming out of the end of it here. And again, one thing that we didn't necessarily mention there quite there is that it did look a little bit suspicious because they went at a they went through a wall to get into a section, but um, that is actually, it's just there as like a texture to be able to keep players from accidentally going through there if they're going on the intended route in the casual playthrough. So it's just, it's just a texture. It's not meant to keep people from going there. It's just kind of a visual cue to help players in a casual run. So it's still considered inbounds for the purposes of this, because again, the entire Rainbow Road world is loaded in off the beginning here. So no need to go, but Still, that right there, that was a pretty slick rainbow road to showcase the conservation of momentum that this game can afford. Um, and then now we're on to another little bit of an auto-scroller here, which, yeah, you gotta be careful because this one, some of the other ones like the catfish and the bird and things like that, you can fall off, both players can die, and it doesn't really matter, you just keep going. This one does matter all of a sudden. If you both die, it resets the disco ball back to the beginning of its track, so. Uh, it's always just best for both players to go for it because if heaven forbid something happens or the controller disconnects or something, like you gotta be you gotta be ready for it. Okay, so first we had Rainbow Road and now we have Waluigi Pinball. This really is Mario Kart. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say the music in the subchapter, banger. True. So good. Back to front thing. Is this oh man, it's it's t it's t it's close between this subchapter and like Winter Village. Like I love the soundtracks that they have in Winter Village. It's so peaceful. Yeah, if you actually can hear it, because the Winter Village music is very very quiet compared to this one. Mm -hmm. You most you mostly get it when you're like in between sections, or if you're like resetting from checkpoint and whatnot. Um, and everything else kind of goes quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Back to 30 FPS. Because coming up at the top of the tower, uh, we are going to see some... Another FPS strap, because we get a DDR section of the game, so another ode to another fantastic genre. And some of these mini games that we do in the between, yeah, you see that. Yeah, yeah. It pops up for gone. a second and it's <laughs> gone. Like, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta be watching real close if you want that one to show up here. Because some of these mini games are affected by FPS, similar to what we saw way back earlier on with the uh, the vacuum boss. So going down to 30 FPS just makes it a little bit smoother. And oh my goodness, we are, we are vibing. MC May and DJ Cody in the house. <laughs> my, one of my favorite voice lines. <laughs> yeah, don't, it's cool don't that the, the interactions are just faster on my work, yes. It's interesting. Also based on sensitivity, too. Like, the top left one here, uh, I have... <laughs> I have, like, a button I push on my mouse to increase my sensitivity, like, a lot. And it's gone immediately the the prompt barely even shows up i mean that is what i did do and i also used an in-game feature that is uh, also really nice since in this game we have uh, accessibility options where there's like simplified button mashing and also increased mouse sensitivity and i use that there as well because usually when you use camera sensitivity that only changes how fast you can move your camera but not for that section for example for that section how fast i move my mouse right and left doesn't get affected by that but if i use the mouse sensitivity and turn my camera sensitivity down i get a lot of more speed there as well and it's really nice that he's like put in all these accessibility options even though i would say that most speedrunners don't need them casually but having simplified button mashing is a bless in speedruns mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the stuff that they've done to make this game accessible for such a, a wide audience and group of people. Like, there's a reason why it got Game of the Year. And just recently with them adding in all the different voice line packages and stuff into the game too is, is really phenomenal to see them continue to make it something that lots of people can enjoy. And even though they did patch in the voice lines, they didn't actually patch in like patch anything else. The game still stays the same broken as it was before. They don't actually fix our... Yeah. Yeah, no, they haven't tech. gone after any of our speed tech now. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up, aptly named the grand finale. It's the final subchapter of the game, and they're going to be doing some pretty interesting movement in here. Take it away, Lem. Tell us about it. So if you play this game casually, you know that you, you walk terribly slowly here. And um, yeah, that's not what they're doing. <laughs> so it turns out when you first load in, you spawn a tiny bit up in the air. And so you are able to jump and dash out of it. And as long as you keep chaining that, you're able to go. You can see here, Cody is fully prepared. And you don't want to stop for a single second because then it turns into the walk of shame. So good job. <laughs> the difference here between any percent and inbounds uh, is that we never switch to Cody's perspective. May can just go straight to the end. No walk of shame here. Did they get it all the way to the end? Nice. Yeah. They did. Let's go. Actually, so, huge. Time yeah. is coming up when these two players come together and lock lips. One of the one of the, my favorite endings to a game I've ever seen. It's a beautiful ending. But yeah, as soon as their lips touch, the auto the load remover stops and time goes. Here we go. And time. Dang. Time. I don't know about my hard split. Um, but typically this game, since client is a little bit different yeah. than host, you'll have quicker times, and I don't know about so, him, but for my splits, this is world record. For my splits, it's world, world record. record as well. 1.6 seconds nice. faster. Let's go. Two, two, and what two, I expected, two, it did wow. forget to record my live split, so it's sadly not submittable, but I wanted to do that. I forgot. All fun. Yeah. With that being said, I really appreciate um, the marathon for having us, to being able to raise money for charity. Hazelight Studios for making such a wonderful game, and the host, commentary, and my partner for being able to make this experience possible. Shout outs to the It Takes Two Discord for just a wonderful community and resources to just experience this game like no other. It really is a joy to be able to speedrun, and I'd highly suggest trying it out if you haven't. Yeah, I also want to, I mean, first of all, all those shots are, are absolutely appropriate and needed. And I also still want to shout out my family because I am as a 17 year old. It's not necessarily common that you can spend almost 2000 hours in a period of two years in a single game and don't get any stress about doing that. I'm living a relatively chill life and yeah, I'm able to do marathons like this, and it's I really appreciate that, how much they're supporting me and running video games. And with that, does anybody else still have something to say? Because if not, I would hand it over to the host again, because we are done with our run. And Any shoutouts for our commentary? Where could they find you? Didn't you do that already? I mean, yeah, it's like, it's an absolute honor and privilege to have been a part of this speedrunning community. It's the the game that got me into speedrunning myself. And so being able to to kind of give back to the community by helping commentate these runs, uh, some, I'm definitely a better commentator than a runner. <laughs> but uh, maybe with a, maybe with a little bit more practice, I need a, need a, a couple more, a couple more hundred hours. <laughs> But it's, uh, I very much appreciate you two for uh, inviting me to come into this and uh, be able to commentate. And hopefully I'll be getting back into running it myself too. So you can find uh, Damon and Argros at, uh, on Twitch at their respective handles that you see there. And Lamura also streams on Twitch doing speedrunning of, of this game, Dragon Age, Titanfall, 
um, on their Twitch as well. Same as their handle is uh, displayed on screen. Same with myself. You can find me on Twitch at Papa Yon. Um, and yeah, just being able to be a part of this and support great causes like this with the different marathons is absolutely phenomenal. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, since he talked about the handles, I you usually can find me on YouTube instead of Twitch. I'm streaming on YouTube. Um, also under Arcross as shown on the stream so but yeah with that said i hope you all have a great time and good luck to the next runners and bye bye indeed everybody bye. enjoy the marathon bye bye yeah thanks guys ローズ、えっと、喧嘩は違う。ローズの精神じゃないんだ。え、そうなのえ、ローズ。あなたは悪くないわ。じゃあ、その、また仲良くなれるってことなのローズ、何が起きても、ママとパパはローズとずっと一
All right, what an incredible run that was by some talented runners with some great commentary. Um, I absolutely enjoyed watching that run. Uh, real quick here, before we get uh, transitioned over into the next run, um, I'd like to bring to your attention uh, some more stuff. Like I said uh, earlier, we've got all of these new donation incentives open. Um, give that a, a check out. Those are all going to be open uh, until tomorrow. So you've got plenty of time to uh, submit your donations uh, for all of those things. I'm I'm looking at that uh, Miss Dragon bid war. I, I want to know what happens if we're going to bully her or let her take a nap. It's, uh, it's a real personal dilemma, I think. Uh, but I also wanted to talk really quick about uh, Completeathon. Uh, so Completeathon is uh, another speedrunning marathon event uh, that has a lot of overlap in staff with the No Glitches Allowed team, uh, but it is focused mainly on completionist and 100% type categories. Uh, the event typically takes place in the summertime, uh, so feel free to check that out over on twitch.tv slash completeathon and at completeathon on Twitter uh, for all those kind of announcements and uh so you have more more speed running to look forward to always more gaming you, you know you can never go wrong uh with more gaming